up, guys? Hey, though, it's me, AJ, along with the Spill Crew. We're talking about Rio. Uh, Rio de Janeiro, the place of carnival, samba, partying, and. Samba, boobies? Big ass, big titties. <laughs> 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 the first thing I think of is Duran Duran. Yeah, yeah Duran Duran doesn't sound like that. <laughs> Was here, he would have been singing. He would have started yeah, singing. Yeah, he knows all the words. He stops from start to finish, yeah. I think he was a part of Duran Duran. No way. <laughs> yeah, he was just Duran. He signed it. This is not even about a character named Rio. I mean, it is said in Rio de Janeiro. Yeah, from yes. the brightly colored plumage of the birds that are the main characters in this to the crazy ass costumes people wear at Carnival. South America is where you find a lot of ass on women. Uh, and this movie knows it. there's a lot of cartoon ass. Yeah, I, mean, I think like, I saw the two bones bouncing on a woman's butt. <laughs> You're gonna love this. This is the kind of movie they love to bring in the over ethnic types. You know, you always gotta have a character coming in, rolling his neck and right. talking about, I'm about to drop my thing down. All uh -huh. about uh, the fat, sassy black woman. These are the birds and animals that would be at the <laughs> Jerry Springer show. Right? Right. <laughs> right. 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 This is the kind of thing where they would have a bird come on and talking about, yeah, like, you're not the part of the This is the company that did Ice Age. In fact, the director, he did like the last two Ice Age movies, a guy named Carlos Saldana, and um, this this movie is like an homage to his homeland. Exactly. Now, it stars of a very blue macaw named Blue, played by Jason Eisenberg, and he's sent to Minnesota, but then he meets a girl named Linda, played by a listening man, and they became friends. And Linda and Blue, you know, they're the best of friends, but one day, this guy who runs then Tulio, played by Rodrigo Santaro. An aviary in South America says, you know, you have a very rare bird. And uh, we need to have that bird breed with this bird, the same species we have. These two birds are the only two birds of their kind. And she does not want to do it. Linda just cock block it. That's yeah, I know, that's what it sounds like. I mean, the bird can't even fly because yeah. he ain't had no ass yet. <laughs> <laughs> and he does not want to do it because they like their little bookstore that they hang out in. And in Minnesota. A, in Minnesota. And yeah, have a that's ritual, where the daily comes ritual. into play. <laughs> I mean, she, she's the pretty I want to f*** them. She says, all right, I'll bring the birds. And she's worried about it. And sure enough, when they bring, you know, Innocent Blue over to this aviary, they so they, they have a plant in there. This evil cockatoo played by Jermaine, what's his name? Jermaine Clements. He's acting like a sick bird because he's ugly anyway. <laughs> and Blue's sweet. Blue's like, hey, I hope you feel better. And that bird's like, you. I know. <laughs> and that bird gives him a look like, um, I'm gonna the first one I'm gonna get. And he's a plant in there to like pretty much help these uh, poachers uh, break in so that they can steal these two birds. And so Blue gets taken. He's caught out in the wild, can't fly. He's on like a chain with uh, the Anne Hathaway bird. Mm -hmm. Who's the character is Jewel in this movie. Or Jewel, so Jewel wants to be free. Blue wants to get back with his owner, Linda. Yeah. yeah but before any of that can happen, they gotta get separated from each other while also trying to survive mm -hmm. the wild out there being stuck out in the, in the rainforest. I like some of the voices, and I was pleasantly surprised by some of them because I couldn't understand, I, I didn't know who they were. Like, there's two birds in here. Will uh, I am? Yeah. Uh, and that's you know, there's this boat named Pedro who is voiced by Black Eyed Peas singing Where I Am. God, can't get away from these goddamn Black Eyed Peas. Once that bird starts shaking and getting down, talking about I'm going low, low. I was like, that's goddamn Will I Am. I know I want, I want to pluck his ass and eat him with some that Black Eyed Peas. <laughs> with that bird wearing a Tron suit. He hangs out with another bird uh, voiced by Jamie Foxx. They, you have a the boy's name is Nico, who wears a bottle cap or a hat. have these numbers that not only take advantage of being, you know, in Rio de Janeiro, but they use the colors so well, too. I mean, there's a point where they actually are a carnival. The animals have great texture on them with feathers and stuff, very elaborate. You can tell where the work went in on, on those characters. Oh, yeah, must have There's two scenes where Jamie Foxx and Will I Am do musical numbers. One of them is the kind of, like I said, the kind of reggaeton, electronic samba type mixture they have in a club. And I was like, and there's a live ass club here. It's a club of birds. <laughs> you know, and I was like, shit, makes you want to get dressed up like a bird and try to get into this shit. You know, it's like, it was really cool. It's not even so much that the song itself is any good, yeah. it's that the songs are animated so well. They're they're like really, really colorful and full of motion and really innovative what to watch. I mean, they're mesmerizing and they, and this is so rare these days, even for animation, they make fantastic use of the 3D. I was yeah. just like, wow, blown away with how good the film all throughout, but especially in the musical numbers, really took advantage of using the 3D. You know, you know, my, you know, I already have the DVD and I had to admit the movie is awesome. The things that really annoyed me in the beginning, they even 
got some characters I thought I wouldn't like. George Lopez. Mm -hmm. We'll play as Rafael Atucan. Yeah, I don't like his character in here. He's the lowest point of this film. Really? I liked his character. I, liked I just thought it wasn't very well drawn, and he's not very good in it. Remember the song that was played when I first laid eyes on you? Tall and tan and young and lovely, the girl from me, Panema goes walking. And I thought Tracy Morgan was gonna get on my nerves, but he did make me laugh as a bulldog with an extreme case of slime mouth. I think I know what to do. I'm sorry about that. I was trying to make my eyebrows and all like, well, different kind. So story-wise, this is the lower end of these talking animal animated movies. It usually involves all these characters going from point A to point B. Point B usually meaning we gotta get back home. And along the way, the characters make a lot of funny faces and talk really loud. I enjoyed this enough to where I would give it a solid matinee. Those things that I don't like, there was enough in here to not let me get past it. But by the end, I let it all go. I came out shaking my ass for this movie. Lots and lots. Just a huge amount of failed jokes. Most of the visual gags work great because the animators are on the top of their game. But I can't give it a full price as much as I'd like to because of all the shortcomings of the story, some mediocre voice acting. But as it is, it's I'm going to give it a high match. No, you know, I'm just going to give this movie a full price because, I mean, the the bones, I mean, the music, I really kind of like this movie. I mean, I really watched it and it's so awesome. <laughs> Again, I hate to bring it back to this. Every, it, everything has ass. <laughs> uh, what? <laughs> I mean, I mean, that's true. It's amazing asses. That's how much ass that's not the American. You think the women there have ass in the sun? Yeah. <laughs> 